Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed that episode. It was, uh, it was uh, applause worthy, correct? Yeah? Yeah. My name is Patrick Gomez. I'm a staff writer at People Magazine, and I am also a huge fan of the show. So I'm very pleased to be here. I don't want to waste any time, so I want to bring everyone out right now. Um, we're going to start off with uh, John Stamos. And he's done. And he's done, folks. That's all you get. Thank you. Uh, Paget Brewster. Looking lovely and what she calls her faux monkey fur. And next we have Josh Peck. Christina Milian. Ravi Patel. And Kelly Jenrett. Thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. We're You're doing great, Patrick. So far, oh. you're doing great. Thank you. I, I try. Just relax. I, I'm, there's some Fox people here, so I know Ryan Seacrest, uh, he's always looking for the next one, so who knows? <laughs> um, no. Uh, we're going to start off with a couple questions um, that I have prepared on my little... Uh, some people that are fans of the other new sitcom on Fox's uh, lineup, The Grinder, would recognize these. Um, and then we're going to get to a couple questions that you all wrote as you were checking in, so we definitely will get to those. Um, I want to start off, obviously, uh, this is a project you guys are having a lot of fun doing. It's very evident on the screen. Um, but I want to kind of go down the line and hear your individual stories about how you came to be a part of this project. Because I'm sure each one of you has a different experience, a different amount of auditions that you went through, a different point in the process that you brought in. And I'm sure everyone would love to hear that. It was down to me and Scott Bale. <laughs> and I won. Thank God. I was older. Well, uh, why don't you start? You, yeah, you're so good at this. <laughs> um, I auditioned uh, once with the casting director and then came back and auditioned once with him. It was her birthday, I remember. And we couldn't find this character. This character is actually was one of my favorites when they were writing it and we were coming up with the idea of a, a strong woman in her 40s who wasn't afraid of her age and who was beautiful and smart. And it was very difficult to find. Even in town, a lot of girls didn't want to play, you know, mid-40s, and they, a lot of them had some, you know, surgery and stuff that we wanted a real natural, funny, great woman. And we couldn't find that person. And, and I, sw I promise you, I got on my knees and I said a little prayer right before she came. I said, please let her be the one. Because the last girl that we saw, and sure enough, she was, and it was her birthday, and that, that's how it happened. Yeah, I killed that audition. Josh? Um, yeah, well, I, when I read the breakdown for the character, and it was just like, you know, very nerdy, sort of introverted, I was like, that's not me. And, uh, and I was lucky enough to have worked with our executive producer, Dan Fogelman, in this movie that he had directed. And so I gave him a call because I really wanted to do well in the audition. I was like, this guy, I don't know, like, I, I'm not sure if I'm this guy. And he thought for a minute and said, yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> He's like, I'm not sure either, but I think you're good. And, and I want to see your take on this. And luckily, he helped guide sort of the performance and our creator, Danny Chun. And then I auditioned a few times and got to audition with the Stamos. And uh, he was so lovely and helped me along. And thankfully, thank God, you know, sometimes, as you all know, because you're all actors as well, it's like you audition and then they just make you sweat it out. And you're just like, you leave, the, you leave the audition just questioning your life you know, like, and your choices. Like, maybe I should have gone to college. <laughs> you're like, is it too late to become an architect? And then, but thank God, I left the screen test and I got a call five minutes later from John and the creators of the show being like, you're the dude. And uh, it was a great phone call. Thanks, man. <laughs> Awesome. Well, my story is pretty funny. Um, it's probably one of the best accidents that ever happened in life. I was actually going, um, I had just told my agents I was ready to delve back into acting because I was like, you know, working on reality, working on my music. And I was like, I'm so ready to get back into acting. You know, this is my profession. It's been a second and I miss it. So um, they, you know, sent me a whole bunch of like, you know, breakdowns, different auditions and stuff like that. Everybody basically was trying to create a cookie uh, and every freaking script that I got. They're like, oh, you went to jail and you came back to your kids. And then I was like, no, 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 no. 
So I got this one, um, this one audition. I was like, you know what? Instead of saying no, let me just go in on it. It totally didn't seem like it was right for me, but I was like, let me just like, you know, be a team player, and I'm gonna go in. So um, it was some whole other script. I went in to go see the casting director, and she didn't even let me read. Actually, she was like, you sure you're here for for this? Are you sure you're not here for this other thing? And I was like, mm, no, I. She was like, it's called the G word. I was like, at the time, it was the G, the G word. And so I, and she was like, you know, it's this character, you know, it's a young mother. She's kind of a hot mess, which by the way, that morning I rolled out of bed, didn't get to put on any makeup. My hair was a mess, everything. And she was like, she's kind of scattered everywhere, but she's like very focused on family. And you know, and then she explained that John was a part of it. I was like, ooh, okay, I like it. So <laughs> she didn't even allow me to audition for the other one. And she told me to come back in three days later for the G word. And three days later, I came back in, auditioned for her and everybody on, you know, some of the the, uh, the writers and following that up, which was cool. Like you said, it didn't take very long, which was such an awesome feeling. You know, I got to read for John and, uh, and some of the producers and the writers. And I, I had a really good feeling when I was in there. Um, you know, overall, it just felt like they were like my friends when I was in there auditioning. So, and then the writing was just so fantastic. I felt like I was just reading as my sister or myself. So, um, yeah, like a day later, I found out I got the job and it was the coolest thing ever. So, thank you, guys. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Rubby, you're fired. Great. <laughs> Great. Thank you. We've been trying to do that for a long time. <laughs> just kidding. That's, uh, that bit's right, hilarious. Right. He does it every day on set. It's the best. <laughs> Uh, so I, I was actually, uh, I was auditioning for a different pilot for Susan Bash, the cast director, and she said, you know, I, you know, I, w I would love for you to come in for this, this John Stamos pilot we have. We actually want someone who's like his age, um, and you know, you're not, but you know, maybe if you do a good job, and she said, well, you know, would you be willing to come in and audition tomorrow? And I was like, yeah, you know, I pretty much auditioned for anything. Um, <laughs> so that worked out, that worked out really perfectly. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure as you guys know, I mean, I, I you know, honestly, like I, I don't have a picker and uh, I just do whatever pilot I can every year and they all end up being terrible. So I'd gotten to a point where I just kind of like, just wait to get one and then I'm done and I move on with my life. And uh, you know, around June, I start looking for other jobs and. <laughs> Uh, so I auditioned for this thing the next day, and uh, it went well, and then I tested, and uh, that went well, and then uh, five days later, I got a call that I didn't get it, and, you know, that didn't go well, and, uh, and uh, actually, no, I think they held on to me for like a week or two, and it was right in the crunch time for all these pilots and all these other pilots I thought I was gonna get, like I lost as a result of me being in first position for this, really screwed me. And then, <laughs> and then I'm like, all right, I guess this, I, this had to happen. I'm just not gonna do one. And then a week later, like my agents called, they're like, good news, they couldn't find anyone. Like literally, <laughs> everyone's out, they want you back. <laughs> <laughs> And they're like, what do you want to do? You want to ask for more money? I'm like, I don't care. Let's take it. That's great. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I remember I went back in and auditioned again because, uh, you know, I have no integrity. And um, <laughs> John was really sweet. And, uh, yeah, happy to be on, on, on the show. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> um, great. So <laughs> that's great. My experience, um, I went to a producer's session, um, got called in by Susan Vash, who also happened to cast me in my very first TV um, role, so it was um, pretty cool. I go into the producer's session, um, we have a great time, they tell me they want to test me, I find out that John Stamos is going to be at the chemistry read, so I'm at home like, okay, okay. So when I meet John, I'm going to say to him, John, from the moment I watched Full House, I knew that you and I were going to work together. And even though that was four months ago, it doesn't make this moment, it doesn't make this moment any less special. 
So I'm sitting in the in the lobby area waiting for the test, and I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to say that. That's so stupid. I'm not going to say that. I'm, not, I'm having this dialogue. You know, we actors have this dialogue. I was like, I'm not going to say it. Okay. I was like, say it. Just do what you said you were going to do. So I go in, and John pops up, and I'm like, John! And the uh, director, Chris Koch, was like, well, you passed the facial recognition part. And I was like, yes. <laughs> and then I said, John, from the moment I saw Full House, he said, you knew we were going to work together? And I was like, yeah. And even though that was, he was like, four years ago, it was like four months ago, it doesn't make this any less special. So he was totally in on my joke. I didn't know. I, he may not even remember this. Um, and then he like hugged me. He was like, let's hire her. I was like, let's do it. <laughs> and then, um, then we, we uh, did the scene three times. And um, the third one, it was like magic. And he was like, ah, I like that. I was like, me too. So uh, I left and Susan was like, well, we should know something. I think that was on a Monday. She was like, we should know something later on today um, or t tomorrow morning. So I clearly did not get the call um, immediately afterwards. So by Wednesday, after I was nearly bald from pulling my hair out, <laughs> I was just, I just prayed. I was like, God, I don't want to worry about this anymore. If this is for me, let it be for me. Um, and if not, it's all good, like on to the next thing. And so then my phone rings, it's from my manager, but it's a call from my manager. And she had that, hello, Kelly. It was that like, they loved you, but it's not right. And so I was like, it, nah, it's okay. And then she was like, I have Judy, who's my um, agent. She was like, I have her on the other line. And Judy was like, hey, Kelly. I said, hey, Judy. She was like, um, how are you doing? I said, I'm okay. She said, what are you doing on Thursday at 3.30? And I was like, I don't have any plans. And she was like, well, do you think you can attend the reading for your new TV show? And I was like, what? Oh, my God. <laughs> and then here I sit. <laughs> As a, a lead or whatever I am on a show, I couldn't ask for a better cast than this. I, I really, we, we put a lot of effort into it because I really wanted great support and I also wanted the, the 22 minutes not to be with, o only about me. And all the time we were thinking about these characters and, and casting was like, how, can, how can, they, can they handle their own stories and can they, you know, they, they take off their own thing and all of them can and they've all been, not only are they the, my favorite actors I've, I think I've ever worked with and you can't cast chemistry, it just has to happen and it has happened, but they're the nicest group of people I've ever worked with and I love them so much already. Oh, we love you, too, I love you too, John. I love you too, John. Love you. From You're the minute I watched Full House. <laughs> I, I, I already did that. So. <laughs> I did that first. And you guys are all actors, is that right, everybody? They, uh, most, they did a great, they were very smart, all, all, everyone up here, because they, they stuck to the script, but they added just a little stuff here and there. And then sometimes we'd say, well, let's just, just do the script, and then so just ad lib. And they were very good with the ad lib, too. So I guess it's good to prepare stuff. I mean, did you guys prepare a little other special stuff within the scenes, or...? No. Mm, no, I stuck to the script. I didn't, I didn't even read the script. I mean, I really just wanted a job, and I was just doing... But they, you know, they, they certainly, the producers and, and me as an actor, you want to see if they can play. And sometimes you'll throw them something and, you know, and, and see if they can play back. And all you guys did. We all did, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that actually goes right into what I was going to ask next. There's so much... In TV, it's all about chemistry and, and what the actor can bring to the part, especially after the writers get past that pilot. They want, they want to craft these characters to the people that are playing them. What do you feel like has been the biggest shift or changes in the character from what you had kind of heard when they pitched it to you and as it was crafting, as you started to see these people come into these roles? And this is for all of you as well, what you feel like, how it's changed. Well, I think, you know, my guy was pretty much you know, who, he, who he's been. But that's a good question for him because we really did tailor each, all these roles for everybody that came in. Um, Josh, like he said, was, you know, written a lot more nerdy. And I think Danny Chun has a brother who's quite, you know, like a, a Big Bang Theory kind of guy. And it was, it was supposed to be Martin and Lewis. But he was so charming and so beautiful he was that they just kept started writing towards that, right? I mean... Yeah, I think so, and and sort of that's where you're lucky with the, having the right collaborators, because especially with something like this, where hopefully you go seasons long in 22 episodes, which we've been lucky enough to get, 
sort of your relationship with the writers and the creators, they sort of see what makes you, you, and all that wonderful sort of whatever it is that's charismatic or the way in which you like to approach jokes. And hopefully they start writing it to your strengths. And uh, it's sort of a great privilege when you have that sort of shorthand with the writers. And yeah, I think they found a great thing with Christina, the second yeah. episode in uh, at the beach and found yeah. sort of her. Yeah, because I think initially, like if you watch the pilot, they knew obviously Edie had, they wanted her to have a mom. Um, but they weren't quite sure. Like I said, they said she's kind of like a hip hop mess, but they didn't really have like the backstory or really the decision, like hadn't decided where to really go with it. So I remember one time before we started shooting, they had me like way in advance actually come in and meet with all the writers and the producers, everybody, and just talked about my take about what I thought, you know, about Vanessa and maybe some like different ideas that I could apply, uh, apply, you know, from my life or just anything. And I talked to them about the fact that um, I was like, well, she's young. She kind of is everywhere, but at the same time, she's protective of her child. But let's also think of like, you know, the modern 20 something year olds. Some of them don't have it all together. They haven't figured out their career choice, but there are d different alternatives. Like, oh, I'm gonna be a social media guru. I'm gonna, um, you know, I'm gonna try all these different things. They haven't quite got it, you know, figured out, but it doesn't make them irresponsible. But at the same time, she also knows better. And she has like, it's kind of like it takes a village. So she trusts that everybody around her, you know, we all kind of raise Edie together. And no matter what, of course, between Josh and I, or Gerald and Vanessa, you know, there's that special bond that we have with each other that makes that great connection with the baby. But um, yeah, they have done a lot of character development as each um, script and each episode that we've uh, actually shot. And I think even in this last episode that you saw, you could see like the, I think a dramatic change from the pilot onto where we're at now. We always talked Vanessa. about uh, the Vanessa character having a crush on the Jimmy character. And then yeah. we got right into this like, oh, that's creepy. Yeah, Let's stay creepy. away from that. So that went out. And Paget was, you know, always, um, the Sarah character was always supposed to sort of be one that was good at taking the piss out of Jimmy. And, and nobody, she found it so great where she could say, you know, uh, she'd say something snarky, and then she comes back with, you made a deal with the devil, and that's cool or something. She had the great fine, you know, could play that fine line very well. And I don't know, how much, have you changed much? I don't know, have I? I, I love taking the piss out of you all the time, <laughs> on camera and off. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, and I don't know how much uh, my characters, I do whatever they write. <laughs> and then um, uh, all the alternate lines they write, which a lot of them are very, very funny. And then um, I'll just answer you whatever wacko idea you decide to go with. I will answer you as though what you just said was wrong. That's my technique. <laughs> okay. I think one thing that's special too is that, that each with each episode, I've noticed that each, we all have like these special scenes together because we're all getting to know each other, including the two of us. Even though not he, he and I, but Sarah and Vanessa, they didn't really know each other. You know, up to for two years of the baby being around. <laughs> and now and we're going to know we each have other. See, yeah, we got to know each other <laughs> really well. Stephen Levitan always talks about taking two characters out of, a, of an ensemble show like this and see how those two will play together, see how those two will play together, and if they play together well. And that's really what's happening, I think, in our show. Ravi, your part has been expanded too, too much, I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. I only want to work one day a week. Everyone knows that. Um, no, uh... Yeah, I think my character started off as like more of a sweeter, kind of softer he was guy. Set, we, you were originally when we when they wrote it, it was you were married and you had like five kids and you <laughs> wanted my life. And at the last minute, I think we made you single so the two of us could you know go off on adventures and stuff. You're a divorcee, right? Yeah, yeah, which hasn't been addressed yet. I mean, the um, I think you know the way he's evolved. Like, if I'm being completely honest, I'm still figuring out some of it because the thing with my character is. You know, he's very much in the first like four episodes, like showing up to like deliver a joke and like a scene or two scenes. And like, you guys know how hard that is as actors to come in and do one line or two lines. And it's very kind of one dimensional. And then over the course of time, you know, the writers have been giving me more stuff. So it's been, it's been actually uh, a challenge, like an awesome challenge for me to figure out kind of how to ground these moments and to make him uh, kind of th three-dimensional and you know especially in later episodes I'm getting even bigger scenes and it's been it's been really You've cool. done a really good job with it. that's exactly what it was it was a guy to come in and hit a big joke and then go out but they but you did it fantastic and I think they're building 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 as you see thanks John <laughs> so yeah things are going great with my character <laughs>
Well, <laughs> we heard Ravi would like to just work one day a week. I'm sure John can make that, help make that happen. <laughs> um, he tries every day, I promise you. <laughs> but uh, I have uh, a question from Meredith. There's actually two Merediths we're going to take questions from. This one did not leave a last name, so she would like to remain anonymous other than that. Um, uh, they want to know, as a series regular, what is your schedule like? How many days does it take to shoot each episode? And uh, how, how soon before you start shooting are you getting the finalized script? Uh, John works every day, almost every scene. Um, he's in almost every scene. He very rarely gets time off. I can speak for you, because I feel like it. Um, I thought I was signing on to shoot uh, two days a week. I was wrong. Um, I'm there a lot. And it's usually, for, for most of us, for the females, we are getting in at 5 a.m. or 5.30 a.m. We have an hour and a half of hair and makeup, and then we start... Definitely, we're always, almost always in Monday, right? Like yeah. starting the week we off as early as possible because we're trying to keep the day to 12 hours. We it's shoot five one, days. one episode for, in five days. Yeah, so it, it's one episode per week. Um, and the babies can only work a certain amount of hours. Um, Amelia and Layla. Um, what other technical questions can I answer? We get the script about, we, we read it, like, say, Monday, and then we shoot it the following Monday. So we live with it for a week if we... If we right, we do the table read Monday or Friday, mm -hmm. and then, then begin shooting the following week. But we get rewrites Sunday night. We get rewrites <laughs> on the day. <laughs> I, got, I got a speech once three hours before, like a nice healthy block, and I was like... Oh, God. Oh, God. And I was you like, were in the it. sides. And I ran up to him. <laughs> I'd already been there for two, three hours. And I ran, and Josh came in, and I was like, uh, did you see page four of the, uh, the, the shorties? Because you might want to take a look at that. And it I was, was like, Yeah, I got speech. two lines. And then I opened it up. I'm no. like, oh! And then, and, but, like, but then it's sort of what's cool, because especially when you're with people who understand the struggle, as we all do with actors and you know, crunching your lines and wanting to make it perfect and knowing that like, yes, you had a certain number of takes to get it right, but you want to get it right and you want to get it right quick. And so like Paget and I went to work and you just started running them with me and, and it all worked out luckily, but you know. That's I, pretty rare on our show though. It got so fast though. And the, it was so well written that it, that makes it easier. The script is in pretty, pretty good shape by, by the time we start Monday. It, that's rare that you'll get, you know, a sure. big change like that. There was just a little issue in, the, in that, that story, I think, and you knocked it out of the park with this beautiful long speech about Thanksgiving. Um, but they're locked, yeah. and, and you know, we have a writer on, this, on the stage the whole time, which helps a lot. Like if something doesn't work on its feet, then they're there to sort of massage it. Uh, we always do what's in the script. We always do one or two takes of exactly what's written. And then we play around. We have alts. Uh, if we come up with stuff, Josh likes to come up with ideas. Paget does not. Um, <laughs> they're better at it than I am. No, she's great they're at writers. it. They're writers. She is technically one of the best comedic actresses I've ever seen. Let this alone is really with. true. I, agree I mean, with that. she can take. She is. <laughs> Right. She's no, 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 so no. good. It's like that. Like the t she has timing and precision like no one I've seen. Right. John, and the rest of us are, are pretty good, but we especially me, like I'm shooting all over the place like this, a gun. And but her but she but she's like you know, she's like a straight fire and I'll hit something around here, you know, but she's like boom, boom, boom. Right, Josh? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's a joy to be able to just watch her do her thing. All yeah. of us are. I think every. I think that's very nice of you to say. I don't know why. I mean I, that about if everybody. If you treat him poorly, then he's really nice to you. That's. <laughs> it's like the game. That's the key. <laughs> well, then but he's shooting all over the so, place. If you he treat is him. shooting everyone. Really, everyone here Not is so strong, so strong, and so able to roll with any alternate line or a speech right before. I honestly, it, it, it's such an impressive bunch of people. I, I have to say, I, I will kiss all of their asses. <laughs> well, to go back to the beginning of your careers, uh, you know, there was one question, again, an anonymous, uh, more people that don't want their names out here. Take credit. Uh, right? Take credit for your work. Um, they wanted to, I want to combine uh, two of them. One was, uh, what was your survival job, one of your survival jobs before making it, uh, you know, that acting could be your only career? And then uh, Meredith Lindsay, she gave her full name, um, wanted to know what advice you would give actors that are working to get their foot in the door. Uh, my survival job, I worked with the American Heart Association where we taught people hands-only CPR. I'll teach you now. There are two easy steps to hands-only CPR. 
If you see a teen or adult collapse, the first thing you want to do is call 911. The second thing you want to do is press hard and fast in the center of the chest, push to the beat of staying alive. How long, how long is this? <laughs> We've got about two hours. I think she could finish yeah. by that. Oh, okay. No, no, no. That was it. That's it. Two easy steps. Now all of you know how to save a life. Is that a minimum wage job? It seemed pretty simple. No, it paid well. Um, yeah, so I, I worked um, at, in the marketing field um, with an amazing company, Blue Flame. I got to work from home, so I was able to like go out and audition. Um, that a American Heart Association tour, uh, we were on the road for uh, four weeks at a time, twice out of the year. Um, so yeah, that was my survival job. I worked at my dad's restaurant when I was eight, seven. Well, I started when I was younger, 14, 15. I had fast food restaurants, and I got on General Hospital, and it was, but I was my dad's Sunday guy, and I worked the safe, and I did the money and stuff, so he didn't let me quit. And I would work on the, during the week on General Hospital. It was a pretty big show at the time. And then on Sundays, I would go back to working on, at my dad's restaurant. <laughs> and people I, were starting to come in and say, hey, I'd like a cheese. Are you the guy on, no, give me a, a burger and a thing. And I'm like, dad, I'm a teen idol. Can I quit the show? <laughs> so, Said, no, son. And I worked for about six months after I was still on General Hospital, and the show was big, and the character was big. So. Discipline, son. Discipline. I'm, I'm glad, I, I'm glad I, he taught me that. <laughs> oh, man, that must have been rough, John. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> you are so going to get fired again. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't jobs, know. Day jobs, day jobs. Yeah. 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 I don't know. He worked I, I, at restaurants. I've and done some bar stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I started. <laughs> I would like start companies. So like I was always kind of doing other things. Uh, I jo don't, <laughs> Josh just said he wished you get this kind of laughs on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. This is the best. Ravi's like a true entrepreneur, so he's like a great actor, but he also like has this amazing. Oh God! I'm still hurt. Company. This doesn't. No. So when I first met him, he he, he had Ravi Hanna. He wanted to do Benny Hanna on his roof. He well, was going to buy one. This of one's still machine. in beta. We shouldn't even be talking about it. <laughs> he, um, he's really. And so we're uh, at, we're doing uh, <laughs> the Television Critics Association uh, panel at the Beverly Hilton. It's a super Hollywood event, and we're in this <laughs> we're in this hotel room holding, and it's me and Ravi. All of a sudden, I hear a knock on the door. It's the head of food and beverage for all <laughs> Hilton hotels in Los Angeles. And Ravi's like, "Yeah, I uh, scheduled a meeting." <laughs> I'm like, I'm like that, what, the Beverly Ruby, Hilton. <laughs> what the shit is going on? He's like, "I got these granola bars, bro. They're gonna explode." <laughs> The Beverly Hilton is now carrying this bar saves lives. <laughs> right. Buy a bar, feed a child. I'm one of the founders of that company. Why don't you just uh, give the bar to the child? This has always this has been John's. Well, John's had a sense. big issue with the premise the entire time. Let's cut out the middleman, huh? <laughs> so that's why I don't know. I've I've been very entrepreneurial. I think along the way, I started a poker magazine a while back. Uh, I don't know. There was a time before that where Kelly, tutoring. Tell us about to save a life classes. again, will you? Right. Yeah. So there are two easy steps to. <laughs> and what about what about uh, well, Paget? Were you? Were, did you? Did you did extra work? Right? Did you say? I started as I started as background That's in. Interesting. Uh, so I married an axe murderer, the Mike Myers movie in San Francisco, and that was while I was bartending, and I bartended and waited tables and. Uh, and all that. I was interesting. Interesting. Then Paget was a person. You were like oh, a personality cool. of some sort, right? You were like. Oh, she had her own show. And well, I started, yeah, I started because yeah. I, I was bartending, and and and, a, and a, an agent hung out of my bar, and I gave him enough free martinis and French fries to agree to represent me. But I didn't know he represented correspondents and anchor people. So he sent me out to meet with production companies, and I ended up doing a talk show for 65 episodes in San Francisco at the CBS station, and then got an agent here in LA and moved here, and was like, I never wanted to, it was fun hosting a show, but I was still bartending. And then they would put my show on. So I would be bartending while I was on TV, the same. And it was uh, funny, but a little rough. No one tips when you're on the end. They you're rich, there. Right? They thought I was rich. That's funny. Why would I be bartending? If I, no, no, no money. But it was fun. I loved it. I was lucky. You're not rich? No, now, now I'm, I'm, I'm filthy rich. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a topless monkey running around as well. It's faux monkey. 
It's faux. <laughs> I, well, I had to say something, right? I mean, you know, it's... You were a child you star. You didn't... Did you ever do any yeah, waiting did you, tables? Did you two or? have side you, jobs while you were busy you, being famous? Kid stars. Um, I actually had Work a couple John's jars. John's restaurant on Sundays? <laughs> See, I wasn't like uh, this boy over here. I didn't have a show named after myself at that age. But I, I uh, you know, I would survive doing like uh, I, I hosted. I was a hostess at a restaurant for a while. Um, all the while, while I was going into auditions for like girl number one and girl number two and, you know, those kind of things. And those things don't really get you by when it comes to the rent and all that kind of stuff. But you still go to all the auditions. Um, but I did that. I did house cleaning with my mom. That was when it was really, 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 really rough. And I mean, it worked out. We found money sometimes cleaning people's houses. And they're like, just keep it. <laughs> I, it, we were, you know, we were, we were good people still. Like, you know, a friend of ours moved into a new house and they were like, come over, you know, I know you need money and we're like, we'll work for it. And we literally like, were cleaning the bathrooms, the bedrooms, everything. And one, one of those days, actually, I was in the closet with my mom cleaning and at the top, whoever was there before had a bag with porn in it and $300. It was pretty damn awesome. God is good. God has been very good. <laughs> and of course we presented it to them. They were like, you know what? It was meant for you to find and so you should just keep it. And little things were, were always things that we always just paid attention to, just the little blessings, whether it's like food from the neighbors, things like that, were all survival things that you know kept us going. But yeah, or porn. Porn say yeah, saved us, saved the day. Yeah. I remember after Drake and Josh and it was like, you know, a lean seven years till this. And uh, so they called me once, I got a call, they were like, hey, do you want to go to a girl's 13th birthday party in Florida? Yeah. And they were like, it's like 600 bucks. I was like, I'm in. Yeah. So I'm like, they're at this girl, 13th, her 13th birthday party that I thought was a bat mitzvah. Uh, it wasn't because I walked on, I'm like, mazel tov. And she's like, what, what will tov? And, uh, and I was there with a couple reality stars and um, yeah, that was, that was a good survival gig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so Mary, apparently the best way to uh, get an agent is either get free drinks or uh, get your start by finding a bag of porn. Um, yes. But to go off of, a little bit off of Meredith's question about advice to, to up and coming uh, actors or people that are trying to get their foot in the door, what's the worst piece of advice that you guys got and, and either followed and it made you fail horribly or that you were like, I'm never doing that? I, I strongly disagree with the advice that uh, you need to not have anything else happening. That if you, if you have a backup or other things happening, like this idea that you have to be so desperate to be an actor, actor in order to be in order to be successful at it, I think that's a really like limited view on on human nature and just like people. I I actually think that as an artist, like if you seek spirituality and happiness through a diverse range of pursuits, it actually gives you the opportunity to be a better actor when you show up to the audition where you might be less desperate because you have other ways of being happy and other ways of making money. When you show up to a scene, um, you have a more kind of like diverse world view and experience. Um, so I think that's terrible advice. And it appears to be like very like prominently, uh, like it seems to be the main thing that people are taught in conservatories. And I don't know, I think it's stupid. There. Yeah, that's yeah. good, yeah. So that is, no, I was just, uh, I agree with everything. That's beautiful, Ruby, what you said. Because you can feel it. You can feel the desperation, too. I think, I was trying to remember, the great thing that my parents taught me was that I just, not to put any obstacles in, in the way or, or, you know, I just kind of, I was dumb, kind of a dumb kid. I was like, I can do it. I get an agent. Okay, I just sort of. Got it. I didn't say, oh, I can't because of this, and I can't do it because of that. And, and, and to, to what Ruby spoke of, too, I mean, I, you know, I loved music and loved uh, so many other different things that I could uh, bring to it. But I was talking to Jason Bateman recently, and he was talking about that he went through a, a rough period. I said, you know, how, how are you the way you are now? And he said, I just stopped, you know, I, I let it all go, and I, I stopped being so anxious about everything and just kind of went in. I know it sounds easy, and he, t he said he takes a lot of Lexapro to get through it, but... <laughs> I said, what's your secret? He talks about it, so it's... Uh, but um, <laughs> if you can get that naturally, that's sort of, you know, what I think, uh, what he does and what, what I do. Yeah, that's do. just to kind of piggyback off of that. Um, one, I think we as actors, we need to be prepared. Um, and then that whole letting it go for this particular audition, 
um, Susan had said, prepare two scenes, and then they followed up and was like, sorry, it's going to be a packed session. It's just one scene. And so automatically, I was like, oh, well, they're just trying to run through people. So I was just like, I'm just going to go in and have fun. Um, the acting teacher that I work with, Sue Hamilton, her motto was have fun or quit. And so I was like, I'm just going to go in and have fun and do, do what I do and just be me. And so I can say that was one of the um, first auditions where, hey, Kelly, um, sorry, <laughs> one of the first auditions that I went into and I was just kind of like, you know, hey, guys, just me. Like normally I'm like, do you mind if I use the chair? I was just like, I grabbed the chair, I threw my leg up over the chair, and I'm like in the scene, like, yeah. and they were like, oh, can you do it again? I was like, yeah, sure, great. You wanna do it? Okay, you guys ready? All right, here we go. And did it, and it was just like, there was, come to find out later, Danny Chun, the creator, um, was like, there was just something about you. You were just so kind of relaxed. And I was like, yeah, that's what they try to tell us all the time, but we go in with all of this other stuff, like I gotta book it, I gotta pay my rent, I gotta do this, when it's just have fun or quit. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's good it. advice. And being on the other side once in a while, I see that, I don't, if I can lay insight on this, it's like it's so out of your control, really. I mean, there was, you know, there's probably 20, by the time it gets to the producers and actors, and there's, everybody's capable of doing the role, pretty much. I mean, it's great to see someone stick out, like you guys really did, like something special about you, and we, I had great chemistry, but with you guys. But it's, I mean, I swear, I, I hate to say it, but I've seen coins being flipped. Uh, there was an actress that I really wanted to work with years ago on Thieves. I want to say, I can say who it was, or, uh, it was, um, um, I can't say. Uh, <laughs> No, it was, Ava, it was Ava Mendez, and she hadn't made it yet. And someone at the studio said, I don't want her because she looks like my ex-wife. So, okay, so that happened. So that, those things happen, which are out of, your, you know, out of our control, obviously. Um, and then uh, there's, you know, but I, I, like you said, you can go in, have a good time, and be the best you can be, I guess. And I, I had a buddy who's an actor that I really respect say once, like, and I don't know if you identify with this, but I find I always leave an audition completely like heartbroken where I've tried to read the casting director's mind or the director's mind and be like, I'm gonna give him exactly what I think he thinks he wants. And I find the times where I walk away feeling great and completely at ease is when I've made a decision, I believe in it, I've prepared and I've gone for it 100%. Like, where I've totally committed to what I think is the best thing, because, and John can speak to this, I think, because he has been on the other side, you know, especially with this project, it's like, sometimes I feel, for the most part, people don't know what they want. When a writer or a director create a character, they've created a problem, and they need us to fill it, and they just want us to be right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, come in here and answer this problem I've now created. And sometimes it's completely surprising them, and sometimes it's completely being what they expected, but, I find if I'm just true to what I think is the right thing and I'm able to walk away is when I feel really, you know, satisfied with what I did. The first thing my agent will ask me after an audition, she'll say, um, are you happy with what you did? And if I say yes, and she's like, then your job is done, you know, and that's it. Just be happy with what you do in the room. I've had auditions where casting directors have been like, you are the reason why I do this and never hear from them <laughs> again. Like you just, you, you don't know. And, and castings where I have never had a call back and then out of the blue get a call from my agent saying this office wants you to do a movie of the week. And it was like, what? And she was like, they love you over there. And I was like, I've never heard from them. You know, so we don't, we don't know. Like that's the worst thing you can do. Like Josh said, try to go in there and give them what you think they think they want. You'll be running around in circles. It's so hard to actually walk out and feel happy if you're not sure that you got it. I mean, I think that's one of the toughest things about being an actor is reconciling the, the craft with the career. And I, I don't really know the answer to that. I mean, I think you, you are truly free as an actor when you're able to have fun in the audition and not care about whether you get it or not. But on a practical level, day to day, how do you actually show up and do that? I, I don't know. I mean, maybe it goes back to the, the other thing I was saying earlier about just not needing it so badly. But I think that's the constant struggle of 
being an actor and deciding to act for a living. And and by the way, along along the way in being a career actor, you're you're doing stuff that's often not artful at all, things that you never want to be a part of, you know, like just to just to continue staying in the game so that one day you have enough cachet to do something that hopefully matters. Um, it's it's a constant, I don't know, it's a, it's a it's like a real spiritual battle I think that we all kind of struggle with constantly. Can I jump in quick? I, this is not bad advice. This is good advice. I, I, I learned so much from... I, once I, I had a part once years ago, I was cast as the, as the chick in a pilot or something. <clears throat> I was younger, and they wanted me to read with all the men coming in for the male part, the way you read with all the women coming in for Sarah. And uh, you, we saw, say we saw 15 people. Twelve were outstanding. Three weren't right, but it could have been any of those twelve guys. And that's when you realize, oh, this I've been great in plenty of auditions. It never had anything. You're not going and blowing an audition. It, it, th someone might be the wrong height, or the, and unfortunately people won't consider, oh, we could dye their hair, or we could... It's, it's so many of us are so good, but... A choice has to be made, and what, what we would always do is, with the casting director, we would turn over people's headshots and hire the person that had taken classes in improv, because they were people who could follow direction and come up with something new and change their attitude and adjust their point of view immediately. The other thing, as, as, as I'm listening to all this, I'm just trying to think back on our process, and other processes I've been involved in, and, and however you can control this, every single time we came close to finding someone we liked, we said, what's the reputation like? And everybody made calls. So I know him, I know his agent, I know his friend, I know this. And there are people that didn't get further along because of you know not great reputations. And everybody on I this- I didn't know there were background out. checks. That's yeah. amazing. Nobody knew you. That's we why they keep shot, trying to fire you. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> what am I doing here? Yeah. Um, I'm going to go to an, another uh, question from the audience. Um, I'm hoping I'm saying this right. Monique Lukens, hopefully. Um, she had a question for you, John. Uh, but what sparked your direction to pursue sitcom, and why is it something that you want, wanted to keep coming back to? I like, I like being on TV. I like, I've done you know, enough drama. I wanted to come back and to do something funny. I mean, you know, we're talking about the hours. This, you know, a single camera comedy is 14, 15 hours a day, right? We, 12 to 14 every day. It's fun to, to, it's nice to know that you're spending all day doing something fun and funny. Um, and I thought that the idea of me playing a grandfather is a good area to, you know, have some, you know, do some comedy in, I guess. Yeah, no, that's great. Well, and then we have a question from Scott, who wanted everyone to share kind of what they like to do off of uh, when they're not working. Obviously, you guys work really long hours, so what do you do to unwind or to, to make sure that you have that balance between enjoying your life and working as hard as you do? <laughs> I uh, drink wine and cook and then and tweet, tweet. Tell inappropriate about, things. Tell them about the soups. I make a lot of soups. Soups. I'm working on udon right now. I like to make chicken broths, and um, I made you some uh, well, split pea with split ham soup hocks could make me better a couple the other days day. ago. She goes on, she went on deadline the other day, and they announced that we got picked up for the back eight, which we're so excited about, by the way. I don't know if you guys yeah. knew that. <laughs> and that's a real... Um, Testament. It's, it, it, Fox has always been telling me since the beginning of us uh, shooting this that they're so behind it, and, and th this is real proof that it that they are because they want to let people know that we're going to be around to invest in us, which is nice. But she went on deadline, and I guess there were some shitty comments, and immediately a snarky comment. <laughs> and I've never written a comment on deadline before, and I know everyone's really mean and angry, and they say horrible things. But I read this deadline article. Yeah, nine more episodes. These guys are great. I get to work with. And immediately, as though the writer who wrote the article put a little comment right below their own article, they said, "This bad cliche of a show." And I was enraged. Yeah. And I wrote a snarky wrote. response. Like, a. Twitter fingers. A. Screw you. <laughs> screw you. B. Lisa, I think. <laughs> B. Uh, uh, where's your show? No. C right. <laughs> C, how many people do you employ? Yeah, D, and D screw, screw you, you again. again. <laughs> and we have Lisa here tonight. Come on out, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> and how about for any of the rest of you? Is there anything that, that uh, you guys do at the end of the day or that, that you make sure to do so that you kind of keep 
a mental sanity after these long hours. Man. Work more. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wash my face. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, for me, as, like, the unknown on the stage with all of these amazing actors, um, I'm still in that place of, like, man, I got a job. Like, I'm a working actor, you know what I mean? Stuff that we strive for. I've been out here for nine years, and it was just, it's at like my alarm went off, I think last week at like four, and I was like, oh. <laughs> true. Oh my God, you are so funny. You get to go to work today. <laughs> you okay. That get up. So yeah. <laughs> well, I, I really want to thank all of you for being here tonight and giving these great questions, and for all of you for being here on this panel. Uh, Pat just going to have us all over for soup later, so definitely get her address before you leave. But yes, thank you all for coming, and thank, thank you all you, as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.